Hello and blessed Saturday on this April 18th. Today for our daily devotion, we're going to do something just a little bit different than um, what we normally do during the week. And that is we're going to look at um, one of the hymns, the hymn of the day that we're going to have for tomorrow for our service. And this is usually something I do at the beginning of Bible study and Sunday school on a normal Sunday. And that's something we'll continue to do when we're able to gather together once more. But for now, I thought it would be good and, and I've gotten some comments that people miss some of that. And so we're going to um, consider this hymn of the day for tomorrow. It's a beautiful hymn. The, um, the devotion we're going to use is the, um, the noon version of the daily prayer, which can be found on page 296 in our hymnal. So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So the hymn we're going to be looking at is hymn 470, O Sons and Daughters of the King. Um, this hymn actually shows up in two slightly different versions with two different tunes. Um, in 470 and 471, 470 is the tune that we are the most familiar with. And there's nine verses here to this hymn, and we'll talk about them here in just a moment. I just want to sing that first verse um, you should recognize the tune. It goes like this. O sons and daughters of the King, whom heavenly host in glory sing, today the grave has lost its sting. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. So, again, that should be a pretty familiar tune. And this song actually is a very old song. It's about, um, or it's a little over 500 years old. And it was written um, by a man named um, Jean Tisserand. And he was a Franciscan friar and a popular preacher in Paris. And um, he's probably most notable for, for founding a, a home for orphaned girls around the year 1492. And several of his writings, his hymns, as well as some other devotional writings, um, have survived and they were printed and used um, in the following decades after his death. Now, one of these, con um, one of these writings contained this hymn, that we sing. And it was published then um, for public use sometime between the year 1518 and 1536. Originally there, um, and there were these nine stanzas and it was called the Alleluia for the Day of Easter. And this hymn was expanded a little bit um, to 12 with the story of Thomas and his doubts about the resurrected Jesus receiving the additional attention. And the hymn's popularity continued to increase. Um, the, hymn, the hymn was originally written in Latin, and we still have the Latin version of that today, and it can be sung um, as well along with this. So we have sort of an abridged version of this hymn, which really recounts all four of the gospel accounts of the resurrection. And the first, um, the first stanza, the one that I just sang, is really just a verse of praise and of the triumphant message of Jesus' resurrection. Hymns 2 through 4 um, really focus on different accounts of the resurrection as well and talk about that. And the message of these verses is very clear, that... Um, the resurrection of Jesus compels the children of God to glorify their heavenly king, for this is the foundation of our very faith. Now, um, because of this, 
Um, we also have this peace of God that the hymn, um, the hymn incorporates and that the hymn proclaims. Now, the stanzas 5 through 8 specifically paraphrase John chapter 20, which is um, verses 24 to 29, which is the gospel reading for tomorrow and the account of Thomas. Um, and so it recounts not the entire story, but it does highlight some of the aspects of this. And that's why when singing this hymn, as we're going to tomorrow, we're going to break this up into two sections. We're going to sing verses 1 through 4, and then we're going to sing verses 5 through 9. Now, as we do that, um, it's, it's really hard to cut this hymn in half because it has these different messages that get, um, that gets um, or the same message, I guess, that gets proclaimed throughout the, um, the singing of this hymn. The last verse then shows this correlation between the Old Testament and the New Testament and speaks about, um, about this most holy day of days. And this is reminiscent of the holy days in the book of Leviticus. The Sabbath, the Passover, um, the Feast of the First Fruits and Weeks of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement and the Feast of Booths. Um, how all of these are superseded by, and all of those point forward to that greater feast day, which is the Feast of the Resurrection, and that's of which we sing here today. And then the message of this whole hymn, then, is, is all about that Jesus really did rise from the dead, and that this is good news for all who believe in him, and even for those who have not seen the Lord, like Thomas did that we too can proclaim out to Jesus, my Lord and my God. So I want to sing that last verse, um, again, that serves kind of as a bridge between the Old and the New Testaments here. So this is verse 9. On this most holy day of days, be laud and jubilee and praise. To God your hearts and voices raise. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. So we continue and conclude our devotion with um, the prayers from, again, that noon version of daily prayer. So we pray. O Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, have mercy upon us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So, Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.